BCNS was founded by Saint Moses Orimoladi Tsumolashi yeah. of blessed memory, who God gave the inspirational spirit okay. to found that congregation. Mm. And I say congregation, white garments. Okay. We believe in praying, praising God, mm. doing revivals. And because it's the first of its kind, mm. to God be the glory. Mm. So many branches came out from the eternal sacred order, cherubim and seraphim. I do not want to go into the deep, 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 deep things that have happened in the past, but for my 57 years in this world, mm. with the experiences that have seen true man, woman, old, young, human being mm. are the most difficult thing to manage. Are you said they are complex? Too complex. Mm. From the eternal sacred order, the first lady woman who worked with Baba himself, Captain Mother, Abiodro Emmanuel. That too broke away, created society. From society, we had the praying band. From the praying band, we had the sacred order. From the sacred order, we have the movement fraction. From the movement fraction, we had so many, so many, so many, so many independents. Man proposes, God disposes. As a human being, we will try all our efforts. You know, as I've said earlier, it is not easy. No matter how good you are, there are bad eggs. And I say bad eggs, there are rotten eggs. The bad egg spoils the good ones. Even without the charity commission to intervene into it, your church members will sit the pastor down or the leader in charge. Our money, what did you use it for? You have to be accountable for it. Can I face somebody like that in Nigeria? Well, it's another very wonderful, lovely day in the city of Lagos, Nigeria, West Africa, as we meet a very, very important personality 
a woman of impeccable achievements, a mother, a grandmother, an innovative woman, and somebody who has contributed to Nigeria, both in diaspora and at home, in her own quota. She is one person that is highly respected and appreciated in the black community in the United Kingdom. And uh, since December that she came into Nigeria for one event or the other, we've been trying to pin her down for an interview. But by the special grace of God, just some few hours to leave the country, just eight hours away leaving the country, we were able to pin her down somewhere in an abode in a government residential area in Lagos State, Nigeria. I'm talking about prophetess Frances Olato Kumbo Oyewole. She is one woman that you find so interesting and uh, by the time we get over this interview, you'll have learned one or two lessons about life, about living, about administration, and even about dreaming. Mommy, we're very privileged to be with you today, this morning, and uh, we thank you for giving us this wonderful time. I know your schedule is so busy and uh, almost uh, nomadic. You're a very busy person. Apart from being a prophetess, you are an event organizer, you are a moderator, and uh, let me say, a motivator. So how do you feel being in Nigeria? And why are you in Nigeria? Because when we learned you were in Nigeria in December, we were like, wow, because we see you on the social media when you make some of your wonderful contribution, especially on life, on living, and good governance. Thank you very much. Thanks for granting me this great opportunity. I, I wasn't even expecting it. Thank you. <laughs> and actually, I normally come home during the Christmas period. Being the secretary for the Eternal Sacred Order in the diaspora, our main headquarters is back home here in Nigeria. We always have our conference, the yearly conference, the first week in December. So I always had it at the back of my mind that whatever I want to do, during the Christmas period, I, co I combine everything together. So I normally come home every last week in November to attend the conference and other events that I have ahead of time. Apart from uh, uh, talking about your business life and your life in the UK, what is your role as the secretary of that great uh, spiritual organization? What does it entail to be the secretary in diaspora? Oh, it's a big task. As you all know, as a white garment church, we are full of life. Everything about uh, religion and Christianity is part of us because it's um, the eternal sacred order, the cherubim and seraphim, which is the head, the first white garment. I had the privilege to walk in the vineyard of God to attain the level of the secretarial, the admin position. It is a very heavy task. Ma, really, uh, what is peculiar about that church, really, you know? It appears that in the diaspora, your church is one of the leading uh, lights, one of the leading churches, apart from Celestial Church, that is a bit dominant. And uh, I think we have uh, the uh, Paushite Luis Aladura Church, too, which is, I don't think it's more prominent in UK now, but I think they have a branch in Germany and some other uh, white countries. But what is the benefit of your church, especially in diaspora? And do you think a lot of people go there? And um, actually, the CNS was founded by Saint Moses Orimoladi Tsumolashi yeah. of blessed memory, who God gave the inspirational spirit okay. to found that congregation. Mm. When I say congregation, white garments. Okay. We believe in praying, praising God, mm. doing revivals. And because it's the first of its kind, mm. to God be the glory. Mm. So many branches came out from the eternal sacred order, Cherubim and Seraphim Church. Mm. 
it was first being migrated to London okay. in 1965. Oh, you mean the church migrated to the UK in 1965 officially? Officially. Okay. When I say migrated, when our fathers, even the current um, Babaladra, as a Abidoye of the movement, they started it. In the UK? In the UK, with our mother, her eminence, Mother, Chiri, uh, Mother Seraphim, Janet Awojobi, mm -hmm. and a host of our fathers and mothers that uh, I cannot mention right now. Okay. And since then, the white garment has been multiplying in the diaspora. We've even spread all over the whole universe. When I say universe, in the America, Australia, all over the whole world. Mm. So I'm happy that I am one of them. My parents were the followers. My great grandparents worked with Saint Moses, Urimaladi Tualashi, which is my maternal grandma. Mm. Well, your maternal grandma actually worked with the yes. prophet founder? Yes. She was one of the last ladies that worked with St. Moses Urimolade Tsunolashi of blessed memory. Let's really talk about St. Moses Urimolade Tsunolashi. Uh, from the information you gathered from your grandma, what kind of person was he? Because uh, a lot of people believe that unlike Celestia Church, that power shofar didn't allow to break into branches and uh, that it was not elitized. Let me use that English. People believe that Keruba and Serafu was broken apart and it was elicized. Today you see this order. Tomorrow you see your new. Next tomorrow you see eternal order, which is the one you belong to. Then the next time you see movements. A lot of. So what really happened? And uh, what is the accurate story? Some people said your father, when he was passing away, he has to kill or yeah, put it into a different uh, path and say, this is how the church is going to be. Some said that it was because he didn't have children. That's why the elite. Um, balkanize the church. So, what did you gather really from your from maternal grandma? What happened really is that, according to my own view, so far you are a human being. Human being is the most difficult thing to manage. No matter how good you are, no matter how perfect you are, human being is the most difficult thing to manage. Yeah, I think you are right. I do not want to go into the deep, 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 deep things that have happened in the past, but for my 57 years in this world, mm. with the experiences that have seen true man, woman, old, young, human being, are the most difficult thing to manage. Are you say they are complex? Too complex. Mm. Even in the Bible, which I, uh, which I read, the Bible says, God said, when he created man, mm. he, was, he regretted. He regretted creating a human. human being. Okay, God himself made that confirmation. Since that day that I have read it in the Bible myself, there is nothing that a human being can do to me that I will count. Or that surprises you or shock you. That's it. Because if God who created us can say that. I offer that statement. So there is nothing to write home about it. So, so you, 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 you are just saying that it's deeper than what people think and that the church is just by the spirit of God the way it is. It is deeper. Everybody wants to be a boss. You want to be a boss. I want to be a boss. He wants to be a boss. Can everybody be a boss? I don't think so, ma. It's impossible. Because there was a Moses before an Aaron and before a Joshua. Yes. Moses, who took the Israelites down to where they were going to, it got to a time where he was tired. Aaron and Joshua was his bodyguards, was his lieutenants. 
that's helped him through that journey. So back to what I've been saying, human beings are too complex and too difficult. That is why so many divisions are from the eternal sacred order, the first lady woman who worked with Baba himself, Captain Mother, Abiodro Emmanuel. That too broke away, created society. From society, we have the praying band. From the praying band, we have the sacred order. From the sacred order, we have the movement fraction. From the movement fraction, we had so many, so many, so many, so many independent CNS white churches. But to God be the glory today, we have a unifying body, which we call the Unification Council of CNS churches worldwide. That's interesting. I think yes. I like that. Yes. What's the purpose of the Unification Council? The purpose is that they want unity. They want us to unite. No matter what denomination you are, whether you are eternal, or society, or praying band, or from the sacred, or from the movements, or from any other independent churches, they want us to come together to become one. Mm. And to God be the glory, we have our chairman, which is his most eminence, Father Solomon Alao, who is the head of the CNS Unification council churches worldwide. I want to ask you this question. Do you think the Unification Council can really unify the branches that appears to have been set apart? Because you're talking about the inherent nature of human being. This one wants to lead, the other one to lead. And when you start leading, it becomes so convenient, it becomes so a bit normal as if nothing will happen. How possible is it going to be possible for unification to unify the broken orders of the movement and the church? Man proposes, God disposes. As a human being, we will try all our efforts. You know, as I've said earlier, it is not easy. No matter how good you are, yes, there are bad eggs. And I say bad eggs, there are rotten eggs. The bad eggs spoils the good ones. So, but you cannot fry those rotten eggs for omelets. <laughs> if it's possible, it could be done. <laughs> so that means the, the rotten ones are bad and are to be thrown away. You can't do omelets with them. Even to eat bread and tea with them is impossible. By um, an example, if you want to cook beans, mm. you know, you have to pick out the bad ones. Yes, From the bad ones, there are stones. Mm. From the stones, there are broken bottles. If you don't sieve them properly, mm. when you boil it without sieving, shifting, blowing out the shafts, when you finish boiling, finish cooking, while you are eating, it's either you eat on a stone, or pebbles, or whatever, whatever. So you are going back to the biblical axiom that says, let the wheat and the shaft grow together. That's it. And when it's time for harvest, mm. the Lord knows how to sort it out. Mm. Let's quickly talk about, before we go into some other issues about you, let's talk about the church. When you look at the church today, and you look at all the news around the church, especially the white garment church, mm. the scandals, you know, the, the scams and some other inherent proliferation of bad morals. What do you feel as a mother and as a prophetess and as a vessel in the heart of God? How do you feel? Do you think that these problems could break the church and make the church look devious in the eyes of the world? Um, not only the white garments, not only the white garment churches that are bad, Pentecostals, other denominations. Mm. So far you are a human being and you call yourself a Christian. We have the good ones, we have the bad ones. Mm. In this modern day and age, with the help of civilization, things are getting better. 
I could imagine only what happens when there was no civilization. In those days, there were good prophets. In those days, there were bad prophets. Likewise, this time, this modern day and age. So it has been the same yesterday, today, and it will be like that tomorrow. Yes. And so shall it be till thy kingdom come. May the Lord help us. Amen. Uh, uh, let's look at it. Between people believe that Kerubu and Celestia came at the same time. Which one do you think is the most powerful? Because if I've interviewed Celestia, people they say, oh, yes, of course. Celestia is a powerful church, Pais Biji or Shofar and all that. But what is different between the two? I mean, that is the question. What is the difference between Kerubu and Serafu and Celestia Church? And perhaps maybe Pa Ushutelu's church. I know that's the oldest. But what is the difference between Kerubu and Serafu and Celestia Church of Christ? The difference that I can see, obviously, is that the, there is no difference because we wear the same white. The design might be different. Celestian will wear their white without wearing shoes anywhere, anytime, any day. But with Sianess, if you are in your white, you can wear your shoes. When you get to the church, you, take, you leave your shoes outside and you go into the church. In terms of powers, God Almighty, is the most powerful person. God Almighty is the most powerful. Yes. Is the powerful in chief. Yes. Hmm. yes. It takes the grace of God yes. to be so disciplined to face the new cause. That's it. The challenges, number one, will be money. Number one. Second challenge is as a prophetess, if they know when you speak or when you prophesy, it comes to pass. You know, I told you, the bad eggs, the rotten ones, will envy you. Hmm. That's the rotten one will envy you. Yes, that's, yeah. that's is, interesting. Is she the only one? Why is it that they always go to her? Why is it that? When she speaks, heaven opens. Hmm. That is it. That, that, I think that's a very sad dilemma of life, yes. especially for those who are very conscientious with what they are doing and those who are very uh, innovative and straightforward and whose anointing of God is on their head. It's just like the case of Cain and Abel in the Bible, yes. where Cain gave a very a spiritual sacrifice and Abel was able to give a loving sacrifice but because the sacrifice of Abel was going up and that of Cain was pursuing him around he has to kill Abel so I think that's the real story of life too that's it that's the reality of life and just to let you know the bad eggs are more than the truthful ones so if God is not on your side there, are, there is an adage, if you can't meet them, if you can't beat them, you have to join them. You cannot beat them, you now become in their bad wagon. That's it. So, but in this case, Prophetess Francis Oyewole would never want to be in their bad wagon. Because she's a disciplined prophetess and a thoroughbred, highly brought up professional. Yes. So how you survive? How did you survive those temptations when they kept flooding in? I do any job that comes my way. So far, I see physical money that I eat my three square meals, and I see money to buy clothes, to buy shoes. I like beautiful and fanciful things, and I'm very selective. That's one thing with me. So you cannot just come and say that you want to offer me something. I will first of all look at you that wants to give me something. Can you wear what you want to give me? No, <laughs> it's not pride, but that is me. So that is why I believe in my handwork. So it's not pride, but it's principle. That's it. Yoruba is saying to my dad, just in a lot of Tony Lahu. Then, to see Ranibe. Towo, but you want me. Timothy Gang when met me, Toti Pui, Timothy Tiria Shoto Dalu, Siba Dimi. Go on, son. 
life is as good and the job is cool. That's it. And God is definitely taking care of those. Definitely. Before I call him, he answers. He knows what I want. He knows what I need. He does it at the right time. Apart from the fact that you are married and you have children, how do you handle temptation? Because you are a beautiful woman. Even at your age, you are still ravishingly beautiful and uh, you, you have a very fantastic, good testosterone skin. So how do you, I mean, how do you survive tempting advances from men, from the other sex and all that? I have just told you, I believe in my handwork. I can, I'm a, I'm a workaholic. Yes. A workaholic. That's it. Mm. During the coronavirus, I picked up a job as an ambulance long haul driver. I can't believe this. Yes. You picked the job and you are just doing it. You just believe that you must offer service. That's it. You must not be idle. Give something back to the society. Mm. It's not free, but at least my daily bread comes in. And I thank God for that. Let's even go back a bit to the issue of morals. You look at the society today, you see a high degree of moral decadence. And let me come back to church. Today you see a cream of young female prophetess. They have tattoo on their breasts, tattoo on their back. Even the next fad now is that people are now tattooing. Uh, is it Bobriski? Ladies will not tattoo Bobriski or any famous or infamous artist, and they will start looking for money from those artists. They say, Oh, I've tattooed you on my breast or on my vagina or on my bum bum. I need to come and collect money. When you read all this and you see all this, coming from your own background, how do you feel with the present day society? That's what I've already said. I've said it in a nutshell the bad and the rotten eggs. The rotten egg that cannot be used to do omelette. That's it. Am I not beautiful enough? Very beautiful, man. I'm black. It's not that I don't have the money to peel my skin to become a white person. But you, you've tried by preserving this wonderful color. Yeah. It's not me. It's disciplined. Mm -hmm. If you lose your self-esteem, your self-discipline, what gives me the assurance that if I do tattoo here, tattoo here, uh, Bob Risky, this, that, Will the men come to me? Diri mi bi itashake, timba di bi itashake, ti oba ye mi bi itashake nko. Okay. I think a lot of people are just losing it on that. That's it. They are copying. Copying and pasting. That's it. Why don't you go on your own space, your own way? Everybody has their own way. We are all going to reach the same destination. It might not be at the same time, but automatically we are going to reach the same destination. Majority of us, stomach infrastructure. Yes. Mouth infrastructure and uh, maybe fashion infrastructure too. Yes. If it's what I've seen when I was young, I don't like to be called a prophet or prophetess. With what I've seen while I was growing up. But there are some genuine people that are doing this thing genuinely. And God is still there for them. There is an adage that my mother used to say, Alabosi alowo, Alabosi alola, Shubatu botu, Alabosi kidara. There are so many prophets and prophetesses of nowadays. They will say they are helping God's work. If it's the way I am, I'm supposed to be more than this. Mm. 
looking at the, the, the you know the church i'm very sad because this affair routine you have just mentioned before we round up it makes me so sad about the church and uh, i feel so bad at times when we read all sort of stories you have a young man of god who is into womanizing taking money from people to sell keg of uh, me at one hundred thirty thousand. you know doing a faro doing other of thing jumping on the stage and giving false prophecy womanizing taking people's wife people's daughters and all sort of things when you hear these kind of things and eventually those kind of men now jump and they now throw them inside the prison and every day they are telling us that they've come out of the prison they've come out almost four times and they're sitting in the prison when you hear this kind of story about especially the white government church how does it touch you and what do you think the world needs to know about the white government church is this the perception of the white government church this fake young dubious unscrupulous and irregular prophets Babani, I will say this adage in Yoruba. Olon wo fero, in yon foto, oro de kwimeta. If I tell you the truth, and you are not happy about it, you are giving me the option to tell you a lie. I'm giving you the option to tell me a lie? Yes. Mm. When I know that this place that you are going to is not the road. And you wanted to go. By force, by fire. By force, by fire. Mm. You will ask me, Woli, is there any way to bend the corners? Lidio. That's it. So for those who are, I mean, I, uh, prophets and prophetesses who are doing things like that, not majority of them want to do that. I want to talk one law. No funny option. I don't talk one law. Yes. No funny, I give you option. That's it. Hmm. No. Nearly a year, you they can scale through only the young law. She gone back about the what you tell that you're a little marriage. All on Robert Luni that you are. I am not here to judge anybody, but a joy that you're a joy ruining. Never let him a rubble bush ever that she nearly a year. Yala ni riri tabi ni bubur. But uh, how do you think we can remove this stain from the white government church? I mean, when you see this kind of people that I've just mentioned, their reputation, how do you think people sh can know the real church? I mean, some of our will be compound, actually, Dabi, a joyly, a joy, me to Tony, King Shamala Lupaida, told you, Jotin jump, you pepper, don't show, but don't show Lupaida, don't show Rishi Rishi. Babami, that's a big knot to untie. I always say it's the fault of the person who went for the prayer and also the fault of the person who they went to meet for the prayer. If I know that uh, by telling you the truth, you are going to be upset, I would rather not say it, tell you anything. Because I know you will go further to another person to go and sort yourself out. Person. Yes. And going to another person automatically will and your number. So by that, let she marry lo me. Let me say, okay, kaka, tama, fi mo wo un lo ta. Kum ku ku jagwa lo wo. But is that how to do the work of God? I won't believe that the work of God should be based on truth and facts. Have you not heard what I've said? God doesn't like us to lie. The human being 
doesn't want to receive the truth. And there is no three words. It's either I lie or I say the truth. Let's quickly brief a bit into Pentecostalism. Now you hear issues about church in Europe. For instance, a popular church where people are falling and dying now. They say they just close 100 branch. They close it up to 414, the charity commission. And there's another one that have 800 branches. And a lot of issues around corruption, around the, uh, transparency, around church budgets, and some other things. If you are found in a situation that you are made to have a microphone to talk to these Jews, especially in the Pentecostal family, what are you going to tell them on how to run church? Because a lot of them, people believe that the money we give for tight should be used to help the widows, the travelers, the orphan, and the Levites. But in most cases, these people have business empires. One of them just boosted recently that he bought three private jets. That is one Joshua, is this Suleiman, uh, Johnson Suleiman of uh, the October or something fame. You know, a lot of them like that come and boast. They have schools, they have petrol station, they have supermarket for their wives. The, the money is obviously being spent on private investments. If you are given a chance to give them a lecture in a ballroom, what's going to be your advice? My advice is... The money that we donate or give to the church is supposed to be used for charity purpose, purposes. In the diaspora where I came from, they do not believe in pastor, prophets, prophetesses, alpha, imams, bishops, or whatever, whatever, to depend on human beings. Everybody must have a daily job that they do that brings money, that fetches money. Hmm. So this. that is the serious problem that we are having. In Nigeria here, nobody. To regulate them. To regulate them. But over in Europe, any other continents, they do not believe that I pay my tithes for somebody to start using it anyhow. Or to live large on your tithes. That's it. Or live large on your commitments. That's it. So they believe the, the offerings are strictly for charity purposes. That's it. Not and for investment by pastor, bishop, Jew. It has to be accountable for. Because here, sir, Ma, with total honor, let me just tell you here, when people like Bishop Oedebo collect their money on Sunday or Baba Debo, all of them, I have never seen where they come the next Sunday and say, we made XYZ a month last Sunday and we are spending it on XYZ projects. And nobody hears. The only thing you hear next is that daddy has his third private jet now. Bishop has four private jets and papa just bought a new helicopter, $20 million. You don't hear about budgeting or this is how much we made and this is what we're spending it on. We're sending so so among. Even their universities are no go area for ordinary mem church members. So what is really happening and why do you think we need the kind of European regulation strategy here? Um, this is Nigeria. Anything can happen and nobody is there to cop them. It will never happen in Great Britain. Even without the charity commission to intervene into it, your church members will sit the pastor down or the leader in charge, our money, what did you use it for? You have to be accountable for it. Can I face somebody like that in Nigeria? No, they will nearly assassinate you, or they can even on the social media, they will have killed you before they even physically deal with you. So that is it. If you talk about it, they will say, Leave touch no minority, leave daddy alone, God is in charge, leave church alone. They will start saying all sort of obnoxious and unreasonable, unthinkable uh, words. It will not happen in the Western world. That is why you are seeing them right now that they are probing a lot of them. If you cannot give a vivid account, of how the money that your church congregation is pumping into the church, they will confiscate it, they will seize it. It remains the property 
of the queen. So trans, they need to do everything clearly. So the books, your books must be clean and the slate must be as usual clean as well. Yes, because you once you uh, start a church in the diaspora, mm -hmm. the government of the country, the charity organization is aware of it. You cannot just stand up and say God called you and you spring up like that. A lot of people say God called them here, but we didn't even know maybe it's Glow or MTR on Airtel you used to call them. And before you know it, the church becomes so massive and you see cars, the bishop, you cannot even touch him on Sunday. There are a lot of bodyguards. We have a pastor here in Oregon, in this, in, in, not far from your estate here. Uh, it, it, what's his name? Is it uh, Reverend Okote? I mean, when he's preaching, there's one bodyguard here, one bodyguard here, another bodyguard here. That's Chris Okote. You know, the bodyguards are heavily armed. Even at times with pistols in their pocket, that you cannot go near the pastor if he's preaching. When he's going to his office, they have to bodyguard him to the office. Does that happen in diaspora? Even, even, even sorry, ma'am, the, the, the RCCG, but by the boy, we do respect to his son too. Bodyguards are always hovering around them, you know. So, what does it take to give them the kind of treatment we have in Europe, whereby there is transparency, humility, sense of belonging? This is Nigeria, as I've said. Mm. I don't think we have any rule and law that governs us. You mean the church? Yes, in the church. Especially the Pentecostal church. As a Christian church, whether Pentecostal, CNS, Jehovah Witness, Amen, Amen, or whatever, whatever. Mm. In the Western world, it will not happen. Even um, all the archbishops, we sit down side by side, we talk, we have tea, we come in together. But I notice it doesn't happen in this country. They've turned them to mini gods. I'm sorry to use that language, but as I've said, this is Nigeria and this is Africa. Man, do you know the painful thing is that uh, if you even mistakenly take a phone and call one of the Jews and say, Daddy, can we know how much we contributed for offerings last Sunday? You might become haunted and they will just start, if you cannot take it, may God forbid the room send killers after you. Is that supposed to be in the house of God? What happened? They will not even allow you to call the Jew they, because there will be so many protocols. To block you away. That's it. There will be so many protocols. Before you get to that main GO, all the uh, uh, Interpol, 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 they would have scrutinized you. Even what you wanted to ask the GO God himself would have escaped your brain. By the time you get, <laughs> by the time you get to the GO, this is Nigeria, this is Africa. <laughs> I'm surprised that the real question will have escaped the brain. <laughs> By the time you get to him, Daddy, By the time, time <laughs> this is quite this is interesting. I find it so humiliating, honestly. It's embarrassing, honestly. <laughs> well, because uh, during the just two weeks ago, is it two weeks ago? The, 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 is it uh, Apostle Suleiman of that Omega family they came on live? The Otobo of uh, the Otobo fame he said that during COVID, I bought three, three private, I bought a third private jet, and he was praying that COVID should not stop. That is why I was saying, Daddy, can life be sweet like this? Man, when you hear this kind of word, when you hear this kind of word, how do you feel for Christianity? Because you are one of the pillars of your church. Kerubu and Serafu is the pillar of Christianity. How do you feel when you hear a man of God, an apostle, that controls thousands of people, telling the world that he bought the top private jet during COVID and he was even praying that the COVID should not end? What I expected to hear from that type of person, as I have told you earlier, I picked up a job as an ambulance driver, a paramedic paramedic driver ambulance 
ambulance driver. That's, that, that, that's a critical job. The first point of contact for COVID people. Mm. I am not supposed to say this, but because it's an interview, to lay it down as an example for humanitarian purposes. It's easier for me to say I bought a house during the COVID-19. Do you think people will be happy when some are dying? No, many are dying. When some are dying, when some are suffering, some, some houses, the, the heads of the houses have no jobs. The wives have to go out to do odd jobs to cater for the house. And you standing on the pulpit saying that you don't want COVID-19 to go. May the Lord forgive us all. As I have said, I am not here to judge anybody, but what I expected from that person was to be going out on humanitarian purposes, to go to that hospitals, to go to places where they need help, to feed the hungry, to help the needy to give something back to the society, not claiming something from the society. In fact, we read it on, you see, a news scoop, something, something, that he even borrowed, allegedly, that he borrowed 100,000 from America through some of his members, that the case is still on his head, and he's here boasting about buying the top private jets, and a lot of them. Even last year, when a lot of Nigerians were at home, you were in UK then, we were on lockdown, Someone like Pastor Ashimolo was still begging people to please pay online. That you, 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 you are not coming to church, but please pay. Even Bishop Oyedepo brought out a, an online portal saying that we should pay money to the church. And But in your own country there, they were giving them palliative, taking palliative to homes, calling people to come to church and pick food. I watched it in America, and I think it happened in the UK to in Britain. Yes. So when you hear this kind of thing, when men of God cannot share, but they want to get because we learned that Jesus even fed 5,000 after a three day crusade or something in the Bible with two fishes and five loaves of bread. But here, the bishop, 5,000 are feeding one bishop, and that same bishop is telling us that he has four private jets and an apostle that 5,000 is feeding, he's telling us he's bought the third private jet in the COVID environment. When you hear pastors begging that you pay on portals, online portals, when people are suffering at home, jobless, no job, how do you feel? You know, I told you earlier, the CNS has a, an umbrella, which we call the Unification Council of CNS Churches. We have the Europe chapter. We did palliative care. Oh, you mean you did it there? Yes. CNS? Yes. I was one of the top officials that led that team, went to buy all the things, distributed it. I have it on profile. I have it on documentation. I can forward it over to you. Hmm. So for those who are saying they bought private jets, pay online, do this and that, maybe God can touch their mind to give something back to the society. Little tiny drops make a mighty ocean. They don't need to give everything what they have, but at least help the needy. Help the needy help the needy because the poor will always be among us that's it the bible says because of a poor person that's why he created the rich or maybe uh, because of a rich person that's why he created the poor person so the poor the rich person can know the difference between the poor and the rich hmm. that's interesting then 